For the record, I can't believe I'm making this video either, but this series has been on my mind for a very long while, so if this isn't the way to vent it out, I don't know what is. Yu-Gi-Oh! The series created by Kazuki Takahashi, which started as a small horror manga, has now become this massive franchise that a large majority of millennials and other age groups at least know the name of. With its humble beginnings from Season 0 and Duel Monsters, it has become one of, if not the biggest trading card game in the world. Apparently, Yu-Gi-Oh! set the world record with over 22.6 billion cards being sold, and that was in 2009, so God knows how many they've sold by now. The first anime, Duel Monsters, featured a cast of lovable and largely male characters, with the main three being Yugi Moto, yes I'm counting both, Seto Kaiba and the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Joey Wheeler. Nobody disses me in front of my friends! These characters, along with others, were absolutely adored, if it's not obvious by the amount of times it either gets some kind of special anniversary movie, event, or card pack printed. But, of course, when you have a series that's done well, you can't just leave it to die out, and in turn, that makes way for the dreaded spin-offs. Now, here's the thing with Yu-Gi-Oh! The spin-offs actually aren't that bad. In fact, they're really good, and any Yu-Gi-Oh! fan who actually watches, key point, actually watches these series, will tell you that, with each new series getting a dedicated fan base with it. Although, we have yet to see what the newest series brings us. Now, while I did say they were good, the immediate successor of Yu-Gi-Oh! actually gets a lot more criticism than the others, with that series being GX. This is what I'm here to talk about, because I actually wasn't a fan of GX to begin with. In fact, I hated it. Going from a cool series of ancient Egyptian pharaohs and monsters dueling it out with their life on the line to a series set in... a dueling school. It didn't have a very exciting premise to say the least, but it's because of this setup that you have no idea what the hell can happen and what happens is a lot. I think I should say the reason GX has terrible credibility as a Yu-Gi-Oh series is because of the 4Kids dub, with 4Kids being an infamously horrible dubbing company and it turned all the characters of GX into hollow shells of what they once were. For example, Yuki Judai, known as Jade and Yuki in the dub, becomes a totally tubular duelist who eats corn dogs, gets his game on, and hits it off with totally hutch. I'm sure you get the picture. It's for this reason that when I'm talking about this series, I'll be talking about the sub only, and will henceforth be referring to all characters with their original Japanese names, because I see the sub and the dub characters as completely different beings. So, if you haven't seen GX, here's the rundown. GX is about a teenager called Yuki Judai, who's desperate to get into Duel Academia, and can for some reason talk to card spirits. Why he wants to get into Duel Academia, we don't know. Why he finds dueling to be such a joy, we don't know. And why he can see and talk to card spirits, we don't know. But from the beginning, we can see he's very carefree, a bit airheaded, and enjoys a duel even what should be life-threatening situations. He ends up getting into the school he desires, but is put in Slifer Red, the lowest possible class one can be in, in Duel Academia. We find out this is because he is indeed an idiot, having nearly failed everything except for the practical duel test. The rest of the series follows his three years throughout Duel Academia, obviously starting in his first year and ending with his graduation. Now, it's probably a stretch when it comes to all anime, but when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, I can quite confidently say Judai has one of the best and most interesting character developments among Yu-Gi-Oh protagonists. But my pharaoh, my precious pharaoh, you shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. If you think that's a stretch for me to say, watch the opening for the first season of GX and then the opening for the last season back to back. It is so painfully obvious this kid has gone through some shit, and he goes through a lot. If it's not obvious, this video will contain spoilers for GX, but this anime did come out in 2004, so you know. Now, season one is good at setting up who Judai is and the friends he makes, but overall it's a bit of a shit season, and I know I said GX is actually pretty good, but season one is definitely something that exists 
It's a good season to get you into Judai's character, but it's overall kind of stupid, although I do think that's for a reason. The most important part of the season is the resurrection of the three sacred beasts, and yo, what the fuck, Mamoru Miyano is in this season playing a one-off character. Okay? Season 2 is when we start getting to the meat and potatoes of GX, more so the world and lore of GX. We discover a cult called the Society of Light, with the leader of it being possessed by what is known as the Light of Destruction. We also find out that, as a kid, Judai had entered a contest with his own custom made dual monster cards and these cards were shot into space because Seto Kaiba said so. I'm not kidding, this is literally why. He finds the cards that were shot into space and they tell him they've been purified by something called the gentle darkness and with them Judai, and only Judai, can defeat the light of destruction. Otherwise it's going to destroy the whole universe. With his newly acquired cards and King Neo, <laughs> Judai manages to take down the light of destruction, successfully saving the world and taking out the light of destruction for good for everyone to live happily ever after. Or so we think. Season 3 is by far the best season of GX. In fact, I encourage people to watch just season 3 if they don't want to watch the entirety of GX because it is a long series. It's season 3 where we meet the best characters of GX. These characters being Johan Anderson, Jim Crocodile Cook, Austin O'Brien and Amon Garam. Gar Garam. Gay Gan Gayam. <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name. <laughs> king, 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 and kind of a piece of shit, but still king. Everyone loved these characters so much, and I'm so glad GX acknowledges that because they basically throw out Judai's original gang for these guys. It's not that there's a problem with Judai's original friend group, in fact, some of them are delightful, but these new boys have so much personality and backstory that we end up knowing more about all four of them than we ever learnt about the majority of Judai's original gang, let alone maybe one character. Not to mention, I have a major soft spot for Jim, and that might be because he's an Australian character and I'm Australian myself, but his voice actor delivers some of the best lines. Wild Volcano! Duel Academia! It's a beautiful! Dino Boy! Beautiful! Angry Boy! Oh no! Before you ask, yes, he carries a real crocodile with him and her name is Karen. But for me and many others, the best and arguably most important character among these four is Johan Anderson. His adore is from Scandinavia, we don't know where specifically from Scandinavia, just somewhere in Scandinavia, who has the ability to see dual spirits just like Judai. Now, since season 2, we could see Judai developing as a character, although very slowly, but this guy single-handedly pushes Judai's character development into overdrive. It's through Johan we see Judai's friends have been putting him on a pedestal through his last two years at Duel Academia, unknowingly putting a lot of pressure on him and making him uncomfortable with the amount they rely on him, subconsciously having pushed him into a leadership position without him ever wanting it. Johan is the only one who doesn't do that. When first meeting him, we see Johan is on equal ground grounds with Judai, only losing in a duel against him once because he was missing a card in his deck and is shown throughout the first half of the season to be reliable, dependable and selfless. However, unlike Judai, he's all these things because he wants to be, and him and Judai quickly create a very strong bond, Judai even leaving his other friends behind because he'd prefer to be with Johan. It kinda sounds like an asshole thing to do, but when you see how some of them treat him, I'd say it's completely called for, and I can't really blame him for clinging on to someone else who just sees him as Judai. Now, at the beginning of season 3, it looks like the big baddie is going to be a guy called Cobra, who's a professor from an overseas academy, but it turns out he was almost easy as shit to beat and then he just dies? <laughs> The real villain ends up being Yubel, a demon who's also a physical card spirit and has an unhealthy obsession with Judai. In fact, Yubel's so obsessed with Judai that they teleport the entirety of Duel Academia into another dimension with physical duel monsters that can actually kill you. Oh my god. A lot of shit happens, but by the end of the first half of season 3, Judai and Johan beat Yubel together, managing to send Duel Academia back to its original dimension, and everyone gets there safe and. Johan! Oh, right. so turns out Johan sacrificed himself, even having a whole emotional goodbye speech to Judai before vanishing and is just gone. Is he dead? 
Is he alive? We just don't know, but Judai is convinced he's still alive. The second half of season three opens up with the principal of Dual Academia telling us who Yubel is and what they have to do with Judai. Turns out Yubel used to be Judai's favorite card when he was a kid, but Yubel thought everyone wanted to hurt Judai, so they did what anyone would do in that situation and sent anyone who even stepped near Judai into a coma. With the show also very heavily implying that a lot of these people either died or never woke up. So what did they do with you, Bell? They shot the card into space. This causes Judai to have hellish nightmares, which was foreshadowed in both season one and two, and his parents decide to give him shock therapy to make him forget everything. Yes, you heard that right, shock therapy on this tiny baby child. Of course, he forgets everything, but every single person around him is still terrified of him and with his newly given amnesia, he has no idea why. So Judai grew up with no friends, no parents because they were never around, and the only joy he found was in dueling, but no one wanted to duel him because they thought they'd be sent into an unwaking coma. This is why he was so excited and desperate to get into Duel Academia, and is also why he enjoys every single duel he's in. How is that not both incredibly fucked up and also incredibly sad? Everyone was terrified of this poor boy and he had no idea why. It suddenly made very obvious as to why Judai seems somewhat so socially oblivious, and also why he didn't really understand the concept of making friends or even what a friend was. Continuing on, Judai blames himself for Johan vanishing, dying, and we can see the guilt eating him up. He then discovers a rift in dimensions where Johan might be, keyword might, and plans to go search for him alone, but hesitantly agrees to the rest of the gang coming with him. It's here that we finally get into the main event of season 3, which is in this hideous dimension. I cannot explain to you how depressing this whole arc is. The colour palette for this whole arc is just this hazy purple and it is always dark, while Judai is no longer happy ever. The whiplash you get from going from this happy-go-lucky kid to this angry, depressed, desperate guy is just a lot. Judai drives himself crazy with his obsession of finding Johan, so much so that he engages in a duel with anyone to find at least a hint of his whereabouts. And at first it's like, oh, it's just a duel, it's not anything serious. Nope. Turns out you die if you lose a duel in this dimension. Like, actually die. Causing Judai to spiral into both fear and depression at the same time, creating a beautiful mix of anxiety. Hey, remember when this anime felt more like a slice of life comedy with dueling instead of this fucking horror show with these characters being thrusted into hell? Judai ends up spending his time dueling a bunch of different people to try and find Johan, a reminder that they're all dying, and starts neglecting his friends completely in favour of finding Johan. In Judai's defense, he did want to go alone, so jokes on them for expecting him to care about them. Judai encounters a coliseum where this crazy fucker is waiting to duel him. While they're dueling, it's revealed Judai's friends have been kidnapped and will be used as sacrifices for the creation of the ultimate card, and every time Judai attacks him, one of his friends is sacrificed, which means they die. So Judai can either forfeit the duel and he dies, or continue the duel and his friends die, but of course he chokes on the decision and throws through some tricky moves, his friends end up dying anyway. With nothing left to lose, Judai practically loses his mind, vowing that he will find Johan and demanding to know where he is. It's only when his opponent falls and is dying that he tells Judai the cold hard truth, which is that Johan's dead, saying his blood is in the sand of the Colosseum. This is when Judai completely loses his mind, and we're introduced to the person that's been residing inside him all along, Hao, also known as the Supreme King. It's meant to be a plot twist that Judai's the Supreme King, because uh, we find out the Supreme King has been burning down villages and killing thousands, and they are by no means shy about it as they show he's been killing kids as well. Yuki Judai, this guy, is canonly a war criminal. He has quite literally committed genocide. This anime used to be about a duel, about a duel school, where they school and duel. How ends up being the darkness inside Judai if it enveloped him completely, with multiple scenes showing Judai stuck inside his own mind, unable to cope with the reality of all his friends and Johan being dead. Again, this darkness inside Judai was very heavily foreshadowed in season 2, but never did anyone expect it to turn him into a fucking war criminal. Jim, however, has a special eye that can see inside Judai, who's the supreme king at this point, and duels him in attempt to bring Judai back out. So they verse each other, and using the power of his eye, Jim manages to get Judai back and together they-
二。二<笑>。<笑> Turns out Judai is so far gone that he kills Jim, leaving O'Brien and Show to be the last ones left. Show is one of Judai's first friends from the series that I didn't really care too much about because I don't really like his character. <laughs> It's especially tough watching O'Brien fear Judai, the Supreme King, because he was the hardest of the bunch. This guy is trained for war, yet he's terrified of the Supreme King. At this point, we don't know how long anyone's been in this dimension for, and it's really feeling like hell. Eventually, through some soul searching, O'Brien gets over his fears and versus the Supreme King to a duel, which ends in a tie. And through the power of Jim's eye, only O'Brien dies and Judai is back to his normal self. Although, the scream the Supreme King makes is actually actually kind of bone chilling. <laughs> Stuff happens with Amon, but whatever, it's just things that happen. But the most important thing is Judai now has a very terrible case of PTSD, fearing dueling and especially fearing the card polarization, which was his main card of use throughout every season. He fears it because of his friends being sacrificed to make a type of ultra polarization card and also because he used that exact card to kill thousands. Judai goes on a whole self journey and says some pretty heavy shit, saying he can't bear the sins he's committed and just wants to disappear. It's really fucking sad. The only reason he's still, well, able to live is because it was discovered Johan was actually alive while he was a supreme king, and he thinks if he can't atone for his sins of killing thousands, he can at least bring Johan back to the real world. Judai finally, finally finds Johan, but turns out he's possessed by you, Bell. Oops. I'd just like to point out, Johan has become absolutely fucking jacked since his possession, so there are more pros than cons to this situation anyway. Yubel, who's now in Johan, goes on and on about loving Judai and how they're inflicting pain on Judai because it's the only way they know how to love. We find out they're possessing Johan because it's the best way to get to Judai to actually hurt him, and we get an emotional speech from Yubel about what they've been through. <laughs> You're stupid. When Judai eventually duels you Bell, he manages to somewhat get over his PTSD and combines both his dark side and his normal side for Johan's sake, with Judai trying to figure out just how to save Johan throughout the whole duel until discovering Johan's soul is resting within his most powerful monster card. Rainbow Dragon. Judai finally gets Johan back, but the duel with Yubel isn't over, and they move on to their final duel. It's in this duel that Yubel loses their shit, thinking the whole time Judai was dueling for them, but finds out, no, Judai was actually dueling for Johan, and he always was. I think we need to pause for a slight second to just briefly go over how oddly suggested it was that these two had some kind of thing for each other. I'm by no means saying it's a bad thing, but from their first meeting to both risking their their life for the other, to Judai's absolute obsession with getting Johan back to lines like this, it's kind of hard to deny it. Anyway, Judai finds out he had a past life where he was the Supreme King, and Yubel, who was human at that point, went through a painful and disgusting self mutilation to become a demon dragon thing to protect Judai in his past life. And it's here, past Judai pledges his eternal love to Yubel. We also find out that while Yubel was in space, the light of destruction had corrupted them because they were in so much pain, and the light told them Judai was hurting them because he loved them, even though Judai was a kid at this time and had no say in anything that was happening to Yubel. So Judai thinks it's his fault everyone's dead and that Yubel suffered and puts all the blame on his shoulders. Oh, also, it turns out all of Judai's friends aren't dead, they've just been sent to hell, literally to hell, to suffer. Which is better, I guess. It's certainly not good. Now, with Judai shouldering all the blame, he uses his polymerization card to fuse his and Yubel's soul, and Yubel finally realizes the true meaning of love, and both they and Judai go on a journey together to, I think, think, understand what it is they've become. The season ends with almost everyone getting back safely, and Judai crashes back down to Earth as a new being. 
Season 4 is the last season, and while I do like it a lot, it was very obviously rushed. It's kind of a shame it got axed, considering Judai is now a completely different person who smiles like once every blue moon, but prefers to beat the shit out of anybody that comes near him. Seriously, he's killing demons, jumping out of burning buildings, stealing boats, riding motorcycles, he's become a real badass. And now that he's combined with Yubel, he's got both his Supreme King powers and Yubel's powers, which is really fucking cool. Sadly though, there's not much to say about season 4 story-wise, but character-wise for Judai, it is really fucking good. This is the season Judai tells his friends to fuck off and fix their own problems for once, and they actually do it, which is incredibly satisfying considering all they did was rely on Judai for the past three seasons. This series kind of ends in a very bittersweet way, and I know I've spoiled basically everything else, but I don't really want to say what happens because the impact it had on me was a very emotional one. It was also what I thought was the best thing they could have really done for Judai and what he'd become. On the surface, GX looks like your happy-go-lucky kind of kid show, but those last two seasons are so goddamn depressing and it's thanks to the build-up of the first two seasons. The first two seasons make a point of showing Judai as the happiest kid ever, with even the stupid filler episodes doing that. There's even a point where Judai feels annoying and you want to shake him and scream just for once. For once, take things seriously. But when season 3 comes around and he does take things seriously and he's dueling for his life and that happy kid is just gone, you get very sad. GX does a very good job of establishing a character, then completely breaking him down beyond anything anyone could have expected. The last two seasons of GX just kind of become Judai torture porn, and by that I mean how much can we emotionally traumatize and destroy Judai before he becomes quite literally suicidal. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX gets a lot of shit. It gets a lot of shit, and it gets that because it's the direct sequel to the original series, but also because the first season seems like a joke. But I do seriously believe the first season is there to bring down all your defences just to leave you really, really upset by the time the series comes to a close. Overall, GX is technically a coming of age story, and while it's a somewhat unconventional one, Judai at this point is a character I feel I can very heavily relate to. We follow Judai through his high school life. We watch him grow up, and he ends up becoming a somewhat jaded adult by the end of it. But there are still times he's happy. He still finds joy in life, even with no longer being a kid, and granted, I haven't gone through everything Jude I went through, but it's something very relatable. You can't be a carefree, oblivious kid forever. You can't go through life treating everything as a game, especially when the situation is one to take seriously. You need to grow up eventually. I think that's what GX is. It's a metaphor for adulthood and the crushing reality of experiencing it, and I'm thankful for that. At the time, it knew its target audience were growing up, so they created a protagonist that grew up with us, and I love him dearly. Thank you for watching, I never thought I'd be creating a whole video about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX of all things on this channel, but do watch it if you get the chance. The animation isn't exactly stellar, but it is a 2004 anime with not the highest budget. And like I said, if you don't want to get through over 100 episodes of this show, it's fine to start at season 3 with BEST BOY JIM CROCODILE Call.